Hi everybody, this is Mike Pock with Three Peaks Photography. In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to add a signature or a logo for a watermark by creating a brush in Photoshop. You can literally make anything into a brush in Photoshop. The key thing is to make sure that you have black on white. Let me show you what I mean. So if I go over here, what I literally did is just take a black pen and write my name on a white piece of paper and then I scanned it. If you have something that is not black on white, you can use levels or curves adjustments to get rid of that color and make whatever it is on the white surface uh, turn black. So all I have to do from here is make a selection around my name because it's written in black and then I can turn this into a brush. So I'm going to grab my rectangular marquee tool and I'm just going to select an area around my name then I'm going to go up to the edit menu and about two-thirds of the way down there's a selection that says define brush preset. When I click on that I get this dialog box you can see a preview of the brush in this little square here and I can name it so I'm just going to name it Mike and then I'm going to click OK. Now you can see that I've created a brush and if I go over to the options bar in the uh, brush tool you can and click over here you can see that the brush that I just created named Mike has been placed in the menu outside of these folders. I can create a new folder if I want and drag it into there so I'm gonna create another one a little bit later with my logo so let me show you how this works. I go over to a blank document and the brush tool is going to pick up your foreground color. So you can see in this case looking at the foreground swatch my foreground color is black so if I click once to apply the brush you can see that it applies it with the black color. If I want to change the color all I have to do is click on the swatch for the foreground color. The color picker comes up and then I can choose any color that I want. I can make the brush bigger or smaller by using the bracket keys to the right of the P. So the right bracket makes it bigger. Left bracket makes it smaller. Okay, pretty cool. So let's take a look at my logo. This is a version of my logo that is all black and it's a ping so it's black on a transparent background which also will work and all I have to do is make sure that I select it. So I'm going to do a control or command A to select all and you can see my marching ants are around the outside of the logo. Now I'm going to go back to the edit menu down to define brush preset and I'm going to name this three peaks logo and you can see the preview of the brush in the little box here on the left. Click OK and now you see that this is a pretty big brush. Again, if we go back to the options bar for the brush tool and click on this pop-up menu, you can see the brush that I just created right below the one that I created a few minutes ago. So let's try this out on a photograph. We're going to go over to this picture and you can see how big the brush is. If I apply the brush then it's going to be the size that is chosen or selected. 
but one thing that's really cool is that I can select a color from here from the photograph. So if I click on the swatch for the foreground color, my cursor turns into, into the eyedropper tool and I can move it to any part of the picture and pick up colors from the picture. So in this little preview here, it shows you what the new color would be. And if I click on the cloud here, that's what shows up. If I want to make some adjustment to that, I can just drag this little circle and choose something different. I'm going to choose something that's a little bit more saturated and a little bit brighter. And then I can use my bracket keys to change the size. So I'm going to make this a little smaller and put it down in this left hand corner. And all I have to do is click once. And that's it. Now, there are some things that I can do from here to adjust what I just did. So if the brush is too bright and I want to make it transparent, I can go up to the edit menu, choose fade brush tool, or use the keyboard shortcut shift control or command F. And with this dialog box, I can change the opacity. So let's bring it down to about 50. And you can see how the logo fades out. Or I can change the blending mode. So the blending mode will decide how the logo or the brush will interact with the pixels below it. So I find with things like this, when I'm putting on a watermark, uh, overlay looks uh, works pretty well because what overlay does is it allows some of the colors from the pixels below to show through. So, so if we choose overlay, you can see that it's already faded out a little bit. And then I can take this opacity down to the point that it looks good for me. And then click OK. All right. So if I save the file from here, uh, this is actually a permanent change. So if I uh, do this, you have to make sure that this is what you want to do. And this would be something that I would do to images that I share online on social media or send by email and things like that. So I still have my original file and then I've created a smaller low resolution file to put online and, and place my, my uh, watermark on it. If I want to make this watermark as big as the entire photo, I can certainly do that by just increasing the size of the brush. And then if I click here, then I can just fade this out with the same method here, edit fade brush tool and bring it down. Let's bring it down to maybe 15%. Okay. So that's a, another option. Okay. So if you want to do things a bit more non-destructively, we can do this on a separate layer. And I'm going to go back in my history panel. I'm going to go all the way back to where we started. And if I want to apply this on a separate layer, I have a, a little bit more control, some other things that I can do. So I'm going to first create a new layer. Uh, normally, I would just go down to the bottom of the layers panel and click the little icon, the square with the plus in it to add a new layer. But the controls for recording my desktop actions are blocking that option. So I'm going to go up to the layer menu and choose new, oops, new and new layer or keyboard shortcut shift controller command N. All right. And I'm just going to leave it as layer one. And now I have a new blank layer and it's highlighted. So if I place my logo using the brush on this blank layer 
can put it down here. Okay. Uh, what I can do if I want to fade this out or change the blending mode, I can do it in the layers panel. So I can change the opacity with this slider or bring my cursor over the word opacity, left click and drag to bring that down. And I can also go to the blending modes. So one of the benefits to using this is that you get a preview of what the blending mode will make the logo look like if you scroll over the choices. So I'm gonna go over to, to overlay and take my opacity down a little bit. Okay, additionally, I can create some effects on my logo here by going down to the effects button, which is the F with the X at it, X next to it at the bottom of the layers panel. If I go up here, I can add a bevel and emboss, which is kind of cool, it gives it a three dimensional type of look. I can manipulate these sliders to create the look that I want. I can also add other effects, or if I don't want this and I want to add a different effect, like an outer glow, I can do that as well. So here's a cool little trick that you can do. Uh, I can take the fill slider. Let me bump up the opacity on this so you can see it better and I'm gonna change this back to normal. So if I take the fill slider and bring it all the way down to zero, now it appears that the text has gone away because the fill color, which is the color that was chosen for the foreground, has uh, gone away, but the text is still there. So if I create an effect like a drop shadow, okay, I can get this. which is kind of cool. So that gives it a, a really transparent look. Or I can do an outer glow, which can be a lot of fun too. If I change, oops, if I change the sliders here, I can create uh, text that has no color fill. So it does look transparent and I've just got a glow around the outside. So pretty cool. Uh, let me show you what I can do if I use that other brush um, with my name. So let's say this is my signature. So I've moved back to the state where we just created that new layer and I've got my name brush selected. So we're gonna pretend that this is my signature. If I click once to add it, then I can choose, let's see what Bevel Boss does. If I do maybe a inner bevel, I can maybe create a look so it, it seems as if the signature is scratched into the surface. Okay, so this is a, a great way to uh, add your signature, a digital signature to your photos. And that's it, it's just that simple. So I know there's a lot of people who pay to have watermarks made with their logo and or their signature. But if you have a logo already made and or you can make one on your own, all you need to do is sign a white piece of paper with a black pen, scan it, and you can create your own brush. It's really, really easy. Okay, that's it for this video. Stay tuned for more tips later on.